So we're going to take this part just to kind of go over everything we've learned and we're going to mock out a contact form. Now this isn't actually going to work, it's not going to contact us. We've still got a little bit more to learn before we go ahead and start doing things like emailing people and touching any database. But what we are going to be doing is using Bootstrap, which is a front end framework, mock out a contact form, allow someone to enter some details, go ahead and extract them details, and then redirect them off to a page to confirm that we've contacted or they've contacted us. So let's go ahead and get started. And like I said, this will just kind of reiterate everything that we've already learned. Uh, we have our views directory here, which is completely empty at the moment. So we are truly starting this from scratch, but we do have our view on our container ready to get started. So the first thing that we would do is to find out where we want the user to land. Now in this case, it might be forward slash contact, and we'd go ahead and define out a closure just in here. And in this case, we need our request and our response because remember, we need to render a view. So let's go and create the view. So we go ahead and create a new file in here and we'll call this contact.twig and we'll go ahead and also create a base layout. So let's go ahead and do that and then pull in bootstrap as well. So layout or layout. So let's rename that and let's go and create, say, app.twig just in here. So we have a basic document structure in here. We'll leave the title as it is because we already know how to update that. And let's also now pull in Bootstrap just so we have this available. You may or may not have worked with Bootstrap, uh, but it's pretty uh, simple to get started with. So let's come over to getting started and I'll leave a link to Bootstrap in the course links. And let's just pull this in from a content delivery network just so we don't have to download it anywhere. So this would go in the head since it's a style sheet. So let's go ahead and pull that in and we are pretty much set up ready to go. Now inside of the body, we would have a container, which is a class on bootstrap. And then inside of here, maybe we want to kind of define out a base layout, but we may wish to do that within our sub templates just here. So let's go ahead and define out a block just in here, just so we can include things in. We can always switch this around. So we would tend to have some kind of block in here. So let's go ahead and end that block. And let's go ahead and just copy this over to contact.twig. Let's just paste this in. And then up here, let's extend that base template. So in here, let's say extends. And we know that this extends layouts slash app dot twig. And that is pretty much it. So now in here, we have the ability to define out our contact form. So we'll just write form in there for now. Okay, so over to index, let's render this view. So let's return this view render, remembering to pass our response in and then the name of the view, which is contact.twig, simple as that. So if we just head over to the contact page, we can close bootstrap off now and we should see that contact page there. And there's our centered content as we use that content class. So now what we can do is just start to pretty much lay this out however we want. So in here, maybe we have a panel and let's say panel default, and these are all bootstrap classes. And then in here, we might have a panel heading or a panel header. I'm not sure what it is. And this might say contact. And then down here, we would have a panel body. And this was where the form would go. So let's head over and preview this. And there we go. So we now have a panel with a header and then form. And what we do just temporarily is over in app, why don't we define out some styles just in here? You would obviously add these in a separate style sheet. But let's say body and margin on the top is 40 pixels or rather padding on the top is 40 pixels. That will just bring that down a little bit. Okay, so what I want to do is maybe define this out in some kind of row. And this is where Bootstrap's grid system comes in. So let's go ahead and say that we want this to be a column medium eight. And then we want to offset this. So medium offset by two. Let's now put this inside of there, like so, paste that in, go ahead and indent this, and we should have the following. So we now have a centered, smaller contact form. So for the form itself, let's go ahead and define this out. So we have a form, we know that the method is going to be post, and then inside of the form, we're gonna have some input. So in this case, within Bootstrap, we can define out a form group, which allows us to give an input in here, and this will be a type of text. The name of this will be maybe the user's name or their email address or whatever, 
And let's go ahead and give this an ID as well. We're also going to include a label just in here, and that will be for the name and we'll say name or your name. So let's just check this out quickly. And what we also need to do is just apply a class of form control on there and we get the following. Perfect. So what we can now do is just duplicate this form group down. The next thing we would prompt the user for would maybe be an email. So let's change that this over to email and this will be for email. And we can also give this a type of email so we know that uh, we get a little bit of front end validation as well. There we go. And then maybe down here, we have another form group with a message. So let's go ahead and finish up with that. We'll say message. And of course, this time, this will be a text area. And maybe this is just called message. And then the ID for this would be message. This would be for message. And then we would also have a class on this of form control. So now we have the following, perfect. So now underneath this, we would have another form group. And inside of here would be our submit button. And we would just say send like so. And what we could also do is give this a class of button and button primary, and that would give us a nice blue button. So there we go, very, very simple. And we have a contact form now that we can enter our name, email and message, hit send. And what we wanna do is submit this through to a contact post route. Now at the moment you can see method not allowed uh, because we only have one contact route defined and it has to be a get request. So let's go ahead and start to define out our post route. So in here, I would pretty much always just copy and paste this down and then change this over to post. In here, we would contact us. So we would maybe send ourselves an email, put something in the database, and then we would redirect to a new page. So let's quickly build up a confirmation page. So let's go and just duplicate this contact.twig file over, and let's go and create a new file in here and call this contact underscore confirm dot twig paste this in and why don't we keep this but just change out the form for a little message so thanks we have your message perfect so now what we can do is over in our index.php file we could maybe duplicate this down and say contact and then confirmed or whatever you wanted to say and in this case we could say confirm changing over the template and in this case, I'll just call this confirm. Okay, so once we've actually sent our contact message, so maybe we've emailed ourselves, we want to redirect to this contact confirm page. Now to redirect, we need to use our response object. And what I'm actually gonna do is just pull this open. Now, if you wanna find this, it's in vendor, slim, slim, under here, and then it's under HTTP and it's response. And what we can actually do is search for things that we can do. So for example, with redirect, that would help. Uh, normally what we would have to do is use the header function in PHP and do something like location and then say forward slash contact, forward slash confirm. But in our case, we can just go ahead and use this with redirect on our response object. So we want to return response because we're responding to the request with redirect and then we wanna redirect to a particular page. Now in our case, what I'm gonna do is, because we haven't really dived into this yet, I'm gonna literally copy this URL out and paste it in here. You wouldn't necessarily want to do this normally, but I'm just gonna do it just so we can get this working. And we're gonna to redirect to contact slash confirm. So now what we need to do is, now that we have our post, come over to our contact form and change this over. Now we can set a path for this if we want to, or a name for this. So let's go and set a name here. So set name to contact. And we already know that over here we can use that helper. So path for contact and we're done. So just to recap them, we have a form that we display with a view, so nice and tidy. We have the posting of the contact form, which remember what we can do now is pick up all of that data with request get param. So now that we have these three things in here, we could use name, we could use email, and we could use message to go ahead and do whatever we wanted with. And then we go ahead and redirect to this confirmation page and we're done. So let's go and test this out and see if it works. So let's come over here. We would normally go ahead and fill this out, but now when I send this, what's gonna happen is we're going through to here, 
we are contacting ourselves, we're redirecting off. So when I hit send, there we go. Thanks, we have your message. So hopefully that was helpful. I know we're not doing anything in here just yet, but this is how I would generally approach uh, that kind of thing. We have a form, we wanna submit it through, and then maybe redirect off to a confirmation page. Now, of course, we'll be learning about how we can do things in here later, maybe with the database. So we'll touch on very similar things later on, but hopefully that gives you a good idea about how you can kind of start to bring things together, but also now keep things nice and clean. We don't have lots of files floating around. We have three routes and our two views.